So I've read Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost First Highest, um, for many years since I was in college. And so this one version right here that I have in my hand actually has notes from over the many years. And I date, I started dating the notes probably five or 10 years in. So I've been dating the notes. And in here you can see I dated the notes 10-6, that's October of 2006. And here's my note I just put in for October 2016. The passage talks about how Moses wasn't prepared or the ready to be the person um, to walk with God in his fullness of his presence, to be the person who could carry his presence. And that God had given him a vision, but it was only after he'd been through the process of purpose 40 years in his wilderness before the burning bush happened, where he could even be able to take that vision and do what God had told him to. That sometimes we get a vision and we want to jump right into it. And God has to take us through a process. And it says, we may have the vision of God and a very clear understanding of what God wants. And yet, when we start to do it, there comes a, to us the understanding or something equivalent to Mo Moses' 40 years in the wilderness. It's as if God had ignored the entire thing. And when we are thoroughly discouraged, God comes back and revives his call to us. After that process of purpose takes place, we become the people who can handle it. Before, we were people who could get a vision and be near God. After we've walked in the wilderness and we've learned about his presence and we've come to know him, then we tremble and say, as it says in here, who am I that I should go? We must learn that God's great stride is summed up in these words, I am who I am has sent you. As long as we feel like we can go in our own power like Moses did in the beginning when he fought for the Israelite and killed the taskmaster, <clears throat> we can't do God's work. When we get to the point where we are trembling in God's presence and thinking, who am I to go for you? You have to go with me. You have to do this. Then we're ready to be used by God. And so anyways, in my notes here, the 10, the thing from October 2006 points to the one above saying that I'm not there yet. I'm still in my own power. Wow. It's now October 2016, 10 years later. At this point in my life, I truly, as of the last couple months, have been in this place where I keep saying, God, I can't do this. Only you can. I've got a vision for awakening and revival I've had for years. I've seen it before and I thought, it's coming again. People have prophetically spoken over me. For years, I've got prophecies by some of the greatest speakers of our time and those that have already passed. Names that you would want me to drop here and I'm not going to. Only now am I in the place personally where I tremble thinking of doing it myself. I don't want to. Only him. We have to have his presence. There's two things I want to share here before I close, and that's this. Number one, realize that if you feel like you can do anything in your own power, it's not inside of God's realm. God wants to do something that's outside of human ability. And then everyone says, wow, that had to be God. That's where I'm at now. Even when I preach, his presence doesn't come. I'm done. And I recognize where he starts, where, where I end and he starts and he begins. I, I know. Second thing is, is what a wonderful thing to get to journal and take notes all these years. I've got my journals, but I use this devotional by Oswald Chambers that Henry Blackaby told me to read years ago. Personally, he told me to get this and read it. This is the one. This is the one I went and bought that Henry Blackaby told me to get. Here it is. Boom. That's it. And these notes, some of them date back to the 1990s till now. And you can see the history just by those little teeny notes, not even my journals. Journaling and taking notes allows you to watch the progress of God in your life. Journal and then go back and notice those notes in your life. Look at those places where God spoke to you and he trained you and taught you. And then it'll give you milestones to build on. It'll encourage you. When you get in your down times, go back to those notes and let them encourage you. Anyway, that's all I can share here. May God bless you and keep you in his face shine upon you. Amen. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.